This video is going to show a bit of work in progress on a uh, lunar lander type program that I want to write. So I want to do something that uses high resolution graphics. The Tetris program you saw, uh, if you saw that, um, is a good example of low res graphics. But I'd like to try and use high res because I think I can do something half decent uh, for a basic program uh, that really would not have been possible using Auric Basic. Um, one of the things about the lunar lander type programs, if you uh, have seen them is that they need to use fractional values or they they they, they move uh, not just in in whole chunk values uh, and how do you do that when uh, d flat has a key constraint of only supporting integers so let's have a look at how to do that um, i've already got the emulator open and before i go and do anything let's just load up the program um, so if i First, load the, 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 the program and you can see um, what it's going to do. I always have to press F6 to speed up the loading, by the way, and recommend it. Anybody else who does use D flat in an emulator does the same. And then let's start it. So you can see um, the lander dropping, getting faster and faster. And if I use the up arrow, it slows down. And there's this quite nice kind of sinusoidal movement to it. As it goes up and down, gravity is acting on it. If I go left and right, I can change the, the momentum of the ship going in the other direction. And eventually I can land it if I just need to do it gently enough. And there is no collision detection on here yet. So so that's the that's it done. And I'll, I'll just quickly uh, list the program, but I'm not going to explain it here. Uh, I want to actually show the program. Um, using the editor of uh, Notepad++. Um, let's just make this slightly bigger. Now the great thing about, uh, for me, for D, in D flat programming, is I don't have to type it all into, uh, in, into the emulator here, which is an absolute nightmare. Uh, when you start getting large programs, larger than this, uh, it can be quite difficult to organize uh, your mind in terms of what's going on. Um, what you can do then is edit programs in D flats. And if you notice, there is also syntax highlighting. So I've got a language extension uh, called Auric D flat that I've defined. It's, it's quite simple to do in Notepad. Uh, and it means I've got nice syntax highlighting. So that really helps to uh, see what's going on. I can see definitions starting in, in, in red and definition names in red. Um, I can see keywords in blue. I can see constants in this sort of greenish blue. Uh, and it really helps. So let me talk you through very quickly what's going on here. Uh, the start just does a bit of initialization and essentially goes round and round in a game loop, um, initializing and playing the game. This is all work in progress, so really it doesn't do very much at all. Uh, initialization, what does it do? Not much. Sets up the colors. Um, and then uh, reads in the custom graphics for the, the little lander graphic. And here is the lander graphic. Uh, it's defined as characters 123 and 125. And here's the uh, binary image for it. Um, these routines are traps don't, and init don't do anything. Um, well, actually, init draws obstacles. And draws obstacle, draw obstacles doesn't do much apart from draw a border around the screen to stop the lander from flying off the edge and corrupting the rest of the memory so it just puts a border and um, play game is where it all happens and uh, I'm going to highlight some things here so n number one I've got variables of uh, x and y dx and dy x and y is the position dx dy is the velocity and because it's integers only I'm scaling the coordinates by a hundred so x and y is 100 times bigger than the actual pixel position. So it's at pixel position 4 times 100. Um, then I've got on this line here, gravity is set to 2, and that's the the force of gravity essentially. The uh, the speed or the velocity uh, in the x and the y direction is set to 2, so the rockets aren't as powerful going left and right as they are going up, so the y velocity is 6. And obviously it's trying to counteract gravity, which is 2. Um, and then xx is the actual uh, position in pixels 
uh, based on the uh, the scaled uh, integer or the scaled fraction that is x and y. And then uh, PIX mode 2 uh, it sets an XOR drawing mode so I can draw on the screen and then erase it without um, messing up whatever else was on the screen. The main bit then is in this repeat loop. So first I just remember where I was. Uh, I then add gravity to the dy value to the x to the velocity in the y direction. Um, a little bit of um, boundary checking. I don't want it to go uh, too far. And then uh, some boundary checking in the x direction as well, in the dx direction. And then I simply add the velocity to the scaled integer of x and y. Um, here I'm just checking on uh, keyboard inputs and going left I or right I add the x velocity. Uh, if I want to thrust then I subtract the y velocity uh, and then I scale, uh, I get the pixel position if it's changed compared to the old position I don't need to do anything if it hasn't changed, if it has changed then this will erase the, um, the, the, the lambda here these two lines what they're doing is reading the pixel position, the, the pixel values around certain positions of the lander's graphic. So at this point the lander is invisible because I've just erased it but I'm going to be um, checking at various positions and it returns a number, uh, a non-zero number. So if I add them all together, um, if there's a non-zero number in P then I know it, something's been hit. Uh, then I redraw the spaceship uh, and that's the end of that if and then until P means that I'll keep going until this pixel value is non-zero and uh, when it is I erase the spaceship I then uh, this just actually echoes the bell character which just makes a bell sound and then I for testing purposes I'm looking at what is the value of dx and dy and uh, forget the ddx and ddy it's not uh, relevant here actually so that's all the program does and then it sets state back to one to to have another go it's completely um simple uh, but i'm going to add more stuff to it now uh, you just saw, saw i made some changes here how do i get those changes into d flat all i've got here is a text file with some nice syntax highlighting so what i've actually got here is um, a utility called dftxt2tap that converts a text file to a tap file so it can be loaded minus l means as you can see here i've got no line numbers so i would like the utility to add line numbers for me automatically here is the location of the lander.prg program within emulators so lander.prg and the output file where it needs to go and I, I call output files that are converted from text t dot because that's a specific format for d flat so t dot lander dot tap the t dot is just for me so that i know what format it's in because when i go to the d flats emulator so let me just let's first run this so it's converted the file now if i go to the emulator um if i do a load uh, well actually let's do new and then uh, t load now i know it's a t load because my program name starts with t dot and that's just my convention because it can get confusing otherwise t dot lander dot tap it's going to load the program i'm not doing f6 this time so you can see how long it takes it doesn't take that long but when you get to really long programs you really have to do this and uh, press start and now you can see the, co the, the core of the code here and when I press start you can then kind of get an idea of how this is working. So as I press up then the y velocity is being reduced. It's all being added to an x and a y scaled integer which is then divided by 100 before I decide before uh, working out which pixel position to put it at. So that's my lander game in progress and I'll be doing more and hopefully completing it in the next uh, few hours. Thank you for watching.